What's up, nerds? Welcome to Pirate Radio, the Enterprise IT Podcast. On today's episode, we sit down with Felix Rivera, Senior IT Manager for Lockheed Martin Space. Felix explains what it's like to work on projects supporting the final frontier, what it's like to get a top secret clearance, and what the next generation looks like for one of America's most storied companies. Felix Rivera, welcome to the Pirate Ship. Hey, how's it going, Matt? Thanks for having me. Absolutely. Thank you. Um, so, Felix, uh, you've been with Lockheed Martin for a very long time, but you're new yeah. to Colorado. What have you done so far in your months here that, uh, that uh, new folks to the area should do? Be outside. The weather is absolutely amazing. The low humidity, whether or not you're in the city or in the parks or just going up to the mountains, I, that's what's been breathtaking for me, uh, moving my family here and just, just being part of nature. I think me even living, living in Florida, I enjoyed the beaches and the water, but nothing prepares you to be outside so much of the summer and the spring and even the fall now. Just absolutely beautiful. And you don't have to sweat every minute you're outside. No. Yeah. Which, which, <laughs> no, I don't have to which, change the which, time. <laughs> that's right, which is nice. You know, uh, our low humidity is, is one of my favorite parts. You get off that airplane in one of those high humid places and you, uh, you know, you, you make you love Colorado. So, Felix, we're going to talk about life at Lockheed Martin, why, um, you know, it's an it's a interesting career for, for young folks to pursue, college graduates, recent college graduates what it's like to get clearance, what that means. Um, but to start off, give us the pitch. Why should the graduating computer science, MIS, electrical engineering class of 2022 in 2023, uh, consider and, and be looking at careers at Lockheed Martin? Lockheed Martin builds the most state-of-the-art products um, in so many areas, in so many fields. Uh, you can specialize from uh, engineering to finance, uh, if you want to go into material science to management. And it offers the ability for you to grow your career from an internship all the way through to the C suite. And you can do it over a 20, a 30, year, or a 40 year career and work in different areas of technology from whether or not you want to build aircraft or whether or not you want to build um, missiles or you want to build s surface ships or even submarines. Uh, we, we participate and, and partner with the, all of the technologies companies around the world, uh, both from commercially and from a defense perspective. And it just from, it's just been such an enlightening experience for me to be part of this company uh, for the last 19 years. I, I remember walking into you know, one of the first times I you know, met with met with one of your teams and, and seeing the, you know, Orion replica that they're doing the testing on, right? right. Space, Lockheed's, Lockheed's part of, of you know, the, the America's space program. It's neat to see, I mean, the thing, you walk in there and you're not. If you, if you have any spot in your you know, uh, in your childhood that was excited about space, you go in there, you're like, oh, it's real here. You know, this is, this is legit. There are, this is what, this is what the, you know, this is what a spacecraft looks like. Yeah. And I got to tell you, moving from Florida and, and, and being at the space coast and, and, and being there 20, almost 20 years and watching all of the, the history of, of the sp space program. And then now to move to Denver and actually be part of, the assembly of, of, of the future and which the capabilities in which we're building uh, is just, it's just amazing. And, and you, you throw, you know, you throw the F-35 on top of that. Anybody that saw Top Gun when they were a kid, you can be involved in, you know, in, in, in projects with that kind of equipment, which, you know, another, another one where you like, when the F-35 flies over, try not to get goosebumps, right? I mean, oh, absolutely. A... And I've had the privilege of going down a, to, to Fort Worth where, um, where we build the F-35 and, and to, to see those come, come off the assembly line, to see all the people, 
the thousands of people working on those aircraft and the, and the passion and commitment. And then to actually see it in theater, in flight, either at an air show or at a, at a, at a base uh, supporting. And one of the things that chilled in being a Navy vet is to actually see it land on an aircraft carrier and, and to see the fleet of, of F-35s on an aircraft carrier in support of, of, of the Navy and its mission. It's, this, it's, it's one of those things that just makes your hairs and, and really gets you emotional, um, but yeah. also, you know, really to give you pride in the service in which you, that, that this company provides. And, and it's not, uh, just to, to correct you there, it's not a landing on an aircraft carrier, it's a controlled crash, right? <laughs> that's correct. It's, that's a, uh, I'm, I'm going to let a little of my, of my uh, uh, aviation nerd out. So um, any, that, that short of a runway, all you're hoping to do is crash correctly. So, um, so Felix, you, you know, you, you're in IT management within Lockheed. Uh, you've got the responsibility of, of, of staffing and finding folks to support projects, you know, across a whole bunch of different uh, initiatives. What sort of projects would an IT professional expect to be supporting over the next five to 10 years if they were, uh, you know, to be, to be hired on or contracted at Lockheed Martin? I tell you, one of the neat things that, that we're doing here at Lockheed Martin and, and is digital transformation. And, and when we say digital transformation, we're talking about really advanced transformation, both currently and in the future. And a lot of the things that you work on um, here at Lockheed Martin will, are things that will, you can work on for the next five to 10 years. And you're like, well, technology advances pretty fast, but that's, that's the evolution, right? We're always, we're always essentially working in the future and delivering the products of the future as we sustain the products that we built in the past. And one of the neat things too is that you get to see the full spectrum and being a full stack engineer, whether or not you're supporting the data centers, whether or not you're building hybrid cloud capabilities, whether or not you're supporting AI and, and, and all the stuff that we're doing from AR to VR to um, also supporting a lot of the software factory I mean, just the advancement in technologies that you will be exposed to and the amount of training and access to training that you will have here at Lockheed Martin is just, it's just, it's I, people always come in and go, I can't believe I have all these tools. And I'm like, cause we always wanna make sure you have the right tool for the right job. And we never wanna have you, you know, just do, do a job based on the limitation of your tools because we're always developing we're always thinking about the future, always strategically thinking how we can support the mission. And so it's not just you doing IT, you're actually doing IT in support of a mission. And, and you're always partnering with the next level, whether or not it's uh, mechanical engineering or electrical engineering, or the actual assembly that's, that's taking place in a high bay or in a big, on a big factory you know, flight line, um, you're, you're integrated. And that's the nice part. It's, and you see it, you get to actually see what you build. And that's something that you don't get at a lot of other companies. No, it is amazing how far removed IT can be from, from the actual deliverable in a lot of organizations. And, you know, I, I mentioned the Orion um, uh, mock-up, you know, there, there were racks sitting around it, you know, supporting it in real time, you know, live with the, you know, the IT folks involved in the process and all that stuff, which is, which is very cool and, and fairly unique. Yeah. And I got to tell you, Matt, it's like, when you see the, that's real time, right? The mock-up. And then you see how, when we're building digital twins of, of, of our product lines, that's even more astonishing when you see it both physically, like all the racks connected to, you know, to these box to, and then when you go into the virtual world or you go into the augmented reality world, and you actually get to see it real time based on all the parameters and all the values that go into creating these digital twins of mock-ups of whether or not it's a factory or an aircraft or so forth. So just advance our, you know, to advance our ability to, to develop that next generation of technology. It's just, it's, it's definitely, it's, it's amazing. And it's a lot of times it leaves yeah. me speechless that I, that I get to do that, do this every day, that this is my job. That's very cool. There, there, um, 
you know, a, a uh, the riffraff like me get a get a little teaser, um, you know, uh, see the Orion or something like that. But you guys have, uh, you know, positions for unclassified folks like myself, all the way up to the highest level of, you know, polygraph, uh, you know, cleared folks that have that have been through the whole, you know, that, that have top secret and the highest levels of clearance. Um, what is that process? You know, you you've been through those processes. Yeah. What does that process look like for a civilian? If you're a recent college graduate, you know, the idea of going through a background check can be scary. You know, I got a speeding ticket when I was 16. People <laughs> are nervous about what that process looks like. You know, is that, am I okay? You know, I, uh, I had a beer when I was 20. Can I still eat cleared? You know, what, what does it look like? What should people be thinking about? You know, if, if you want to do it, you know, what are some tips and pointers and, and thoughts? Yeah, and, that, and one of the things that, I, and I've been through it, right? I, I started out on the unclass side of Lockheed Martin and throughout my career it was definitely something that I wanted to um, pursue because of the work that I had done previously in the military. And then I wanted to, to get to that level of clearance so that I could work on kind of that next generation technology um, and going through that process can be scary and, and it is time consuming. Um, but as long as you, you, you have your information, so this is where you're hoping that either your parents or your grandparents or somebody kept records of all your stuff, <laughs> or at least being neat as if you're going, like whether or not you're going to college or you're moving places, make sure you keep track yeah. of all, like all that information. It's so important when you're going for your clearance um, so that they can go look. Right. They can you have you're, you're providing the information, they can contact the right people. And and a lot of times, depending on, you know, the length of time that you were out of college or maybe the, the length of time you've spent in a certain location, um, that will actually help because you didn't move around a lot or you were, you know, or you're depending on what, um, you know, what your background was. And as long as you're able to. Uh, think about that while you're going through high school or you're going through college. Think about what your what your future you want, and if you want to be able to work on you know clar classified um, projects and you want to have that and you know you're going to have that additional backgrounds, then you think about the choices you know some of the choices you may you may make um, uh, that you know maybe whether or not it's in high school or 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 in college or in things that you want to ensure that you know or earlier in your career. Because again, you're gonna as long as you're honest and you're able to to speak to those, you know, everybody everybody's gonna make mistakes. Things will happen in life. As long as you can speak to them and you're honest, and they're not things that you you're hiding, you're pretty much okay. So I can tell them I had a beer when I was twenty, and I'll be okay. Yeah, as long as you're honest. As long as you're honest. Good. As long as long as when they're going through and they go, wait a minute, he left out all of this. Then that's when they, you know, call it. It brings up doubt and the information you provided. All right, fine, Felix, it was a wine cooler. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, that's, uh, that, that's interesting. I know it, it's kind of the process seems scary to folks. Um, you know, just the idea of what, you know, what does it look like? Because it is, it is um, you know, it's, it's hard to find information about what that process looks like. But the good, uh, I could tell you, Matt, the good thing is that um, we're gonna guide you the whole way, right? We're yep. You're what, and if you're going through that, you're going to have work on. You're going to be getting training. You're going to be working on unclassified teams and other class and on projects. Um, we're going to ensure that you know you're you're getting skilled up, so that when you do finally when you get that um, clearance, whether or not it's secret or top secret, we're able to and that you're you're going into that program, skilled up in a way that's going to be able to benefit that program. The you know better than when they first hired you in a sense. So you so to that that college graduate that's worried about getting their first job, you're you're a Lockheed employee as you're going through the process. You're working on unclassified projects. You don't have to worry about floating a year while you're trying to get, you know, you know, working at working fast food restaurants to pay the bills while you're waiting. You're working at Lockheed while Yeah, you you are a team member. You're working at Lockheed. Yep. We're training you up. We're getting you skilled up so that when you go into that program, 
you were ready to go day one when you hit the when you hit the ground. Is it fair to say that if you're you know if you, if we are if you're talking to a recent college graduate or you know a, a, a someone in college that um, just being younger makes the process a little easier, just having less residencies, less yeah you know that that makes the process easier for the most part absolutely i mean the, yeah. the more you have the more they have to go through right the, um so yeah younger getting your clearance um while you're young um being you know going through the process um while you're younger definitely um speeds up the the process um but for the most part you're still looking at anywhere from from 12 to 18 months depending on the level in which um we're you know that the individual is applying for or the program yeah. which they'll be supporting. Um, but we have we have so many different programs um, when you come in um, and the culture just supports it. And so you'll you'll never feel like like you're you're not you're not part of the team. You'll never feel like, oh I'm I've been waiting 18 months now, you know, what's gonna happen when I get there? Um, or did I miss out on anything? Because um, we're going to be growing you as an individual, as an employee, as a professional, um, to make sure that you're ready to go when you you uh, get you know get your clearance and you're able to go behind behind the closed door in a sense. That's awesome. So, um, you know, information technology folks are often gearheads, tinkerers, you know, MacGyver types. Um, they like playing with stuff. Um, you know, you can't tell us what's behind the door, but what sort of interesting toys, tools, equipment do you get exposed to that, you know, I know, I know Lockheed, for instance, was a, uh, you know, ran with uh, containers early, you know, and, and, and was using those sort of tools and mm -hmm. things like that. What sort of tools do, do you get exposed to? You mentioned earlier, too, that, you know, you guys have access to everything, everything cool, if it can be done better, <laughs> you'll do it. What, what sort of, Give us a hook here for the kind of tools that the graduating class of 2021, 20, 22, and 23 would get to see at Lockheed. Well, it's 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 quite interesting because a lot of the a lot of the tools that that were that you'll get to work on, whether or not it's on the unclass um, side or even on 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 the classified side, a lot of those tools um, are prototyped and developed on the low side. Uh, so whether or not you're doing um, digital mockups or um, via tablets or, or Surface Pros, and you're building out digital twins and, and of, of whether or not it's a, an IT infrastructure or maybe a satellite or an aircraft, a lot of times you're doing that on the low side to, to, to just to validate the capability for us to be able to do it on the high side. Um, it doesn't have all the kind of program specifics because it's not on the high side, but you're able to really leverage all of the compute power, whether or not it's on the commercial clouds, whether or not it's on-prem, um, on-prem clouds that we have. Um, and all those tools that then when I say are at your fingertips, they truly are. Uh, a lot of the stuff that we have is, is on demand. So whether or not you're building up sandboxes or whether or not you're building up actual environments, you're able to, depending on your skill set, to really be able to advance what you're looking to do um, at the pace you're willing, you're you're capable of doing. And that's one of the things that we that we really promote here at Lockheed. Uh, we don't want you to be held back by what's it, you know, your whether or not it's your laptop is limitation of compute or whether or not it's a server farm and that's limitation of, of, of compute or services. We continue to evolve the capabilities across. So whether or not you want to do software development, whether or not you want to do robotics where you're doing embedded type of uh, coding and development, or you're doing um, development in regards to how we're gonna, you know, land on Mars, right? Or um, as part of Orion and doing flight software and so forth, you're able to do all of that from essentially your desk. Um, and then when we when we look at those tools in the high side, you're able to then bring, you know, take those tools and do them in real time, and really have the 
kind of the walk around capability um, to be able to do that on the high side. And that's, and that's really where the tools, the availability to tools, whether or not they're physical tools or, or digital tools, um, we have the full catalog at our, at our fingertips um, to be able to really innovate and, and develop those um, tools and services and capabilities of the future. Well, that's, uh, that, that's fantastic. So uh, for the, for the uh, tinkerers, the MacGyver types, uh, you've got a, uh, a toolbox overflowing with, with uh, uh, neat tools to get jobs done. That's exciting stuff. So Felix, um, what career advice would you give your 22 year old self? You just graduated from, from uh, CU Boulder, CU Denver, Metro State, CSU, uh, University of Utah, Kansas State, KU, somewhere in the region here, you're wanting to get to Denver. Uh, what advice do you have for yourself? One, I would tell them to, to, to dream and, and, and dream early um, and not be afraid to take risks. Uh, one of the things I did as, as, as in telling that one person, right, I joined the Navy, I, I'd ne I, I would never take that back. I'd do it again, uh, the experience that I was able to get there by serving. Um, and that passion for serving is carried on um, here at Lockheed Martin. And, and, and it's at our core on, on what we do every day. And, and, and that's something I would, I would do again. I would join Lockheed Martin again. The difference that I would tell myself is that probably do a, a less, less sports um, I, earlier in my career because I was young. I was doing a lot of sports and uh, it was a lot of work-life balance. Um, and, but I had so much fun. And yeah. the, 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 the experience I've gained over the last, you know, 19 years working at Lockheed Martin is, and, and being in so many different roles, uh, being in leadership programs, um, rotational programs, uh, having the ability to work on international programs, and then now here working, you know, dedicated for, you know, here at Space and supporting um, both what we do from a commercial standpoint and what we do from a government standpoint is just, it's just amazing. And um, so telling that one person, um, maybe save more, <laughs> put, put a little bit more money, more money away, uh, invest in stocks like Amazon and Apple, you know, you know, those things, you know, those. You're, you're, I think you're doing, uh, <laughs> is this, um, is this Back to the Future 3? That you're doing it, right it, now? I think you so. the, <laughs> I think you just described the plot of Back to the Future 3. Get the gambling <laughs> book, bring it back. Don't let Biff get it. I have to, you have to, right? If you had that opportunity right. to tell, you got to <laughs> at least drop one or two you know, things to say, hey, yeah. we got 10, you know, put some, save some money, put some, put some, you know, invest in the market, you know, back in, t you know, 2010 and you're, you'll be pretty good right now, <laughs> but, but done pretty Tesla well. in 2018, <laughs> you'll be fine. Yeah. Yeah. Tell, right. Yeah. Exactly. Invest in Tesla. Um, but it's just, you know, it's one of those things where, you know, you look back in life and Lockheed's been able to, you know, you look at those times, right? 2008, all the things that even you know, I go, you know, just everything that's the, the country has gone through, um, you know, serving here at Lockheed Martin is just, it, it's, it's allowed um, myself to, to continue to be inspired, to continue to be in, in touch with the mission and what we're doing uh, for our country and, and having that connection um, yep. is something that gets me up every day um, and, and going to work. And, and I was just telling you, like I was interviewing some, you know, interns uh, for the summer of 2022 and, and just seeing, seeing them inspires me to continue to want to do what I do to, you know, to keep paving the way to create the opportunity for, for that next generation to come in and be able to experience what I was able to experience. And we'll continue to experience. Yeah, and I think it's—I think that's an important thing. I mean, at 22, find something that's satisfying and inspiring. You know, yep. um, everybody wants to chase the dollar right out of college. You can you can do very well for yourself at Lockheed, and Absolutely. have a sense of purpose. You know, we're you're involved in the space program. 
you're involved in national defense, you're involved in, you know, just the coolest technologies out there, right? Just at a, at a scale that's, uh, you know, that's, that's, that not a lot of organizations can pull off. No, no, so. not, not at all. And the people, and I can tell you, the people you're going to meet, um, the people that you're going to, that you're going to collaborate with, that you're going to innovate with are those you're, you're just not going to meet the, any, you know, anywhere else, the, the people the are just, caliber. The, yeah, the caliber of, of, of talent and just not, and just nice people. Like we just, I mean, we, we have a, here at Lockheed, we just, we just, we treat others like we want to be treated. Um, we, we're all, we respect each other as professionals and we don't accept anything else. And, and a lot of, a lot of companies put that as logo, but we truly believe it. Um, we live by it. And, and so coming to Lockheed Martin is whether or not you're an intern or even a mid-career, you you know, when you join, when you join Lockheed Martin, you're, you're going to be in an environment that you can, that you can follow your passion and, and be able to innovate and be part and really grow your skills uh, to where you would like them to be. And you'll get that support and you're going to get that partnership across the board. It, I, I've gathered that, that it, it, it's absolutely an organization that wants people to su succeed and, you know, can continue to carry the ball, you know, to, 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 to move, to move the ball down the field and, and, you know, make, make the collective success, you know, continue. Right. So, well, Felix, thank you for, uh, thanks for joining us on, uh, on the IT pirate ship and pirate radio and uh, good luck with uh, the recruiting class of, of 2021 and 2022. Thank you, man. And I really appreciate the opportunity and a big fan and look forward to continuing to listen. So thank you. Thanks, Felix.